Welcome to And Then the Bow Rang, your ultimate trip down memory lane, where we relive we we relive the golden eras of the wrestling of from the 1980s and the 1990s. Join us as we dive into the iconic matches, legendary rivalries, and unforgettable moments that define the squared circle. Whether you cheered for your heroes or rooted for your villains, this podcast is for every fan who remembers the thrill of the bell ringing and the magic that followed. Let's step into the ring and journey back into the days when wrestling was larger than life. And here is my larger than life co-host, Lex Lloydy. Well, welcome, Lloyd. Welcome indeed. How are you? Yes, very good. Yes, it's all going well so far. Uh, <laughs> Obviously started my new job. It's going well so far. So, yes. Um, I mean, again, let's go back to the theme of the of the show. I mean, wrestling was not, you know, it doesn't get much bigger than WrestleMania 3. Um, largest in wrestling in ten, attendance record or whatever it was back then in the 80s. Um, this was a phenomenal uh, WrestleMania, I think. Mm. Yeah, it was. It's... Um... It's probably my favourite WrestleMania of all time. Yeah. Um, even though it's really before both of our times, and I think I would have been about five and a half. Yeah. You know, yeah. Roughly, roughly five, I suppose. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we just didn't have exposure to this when we were kids in the UK. No. Uh, wrestling, WWF, my first memories of it were on um, Sky, television and cable. Yeah. Which didn't come until about 1989, 90, so... Yeah. We sort of missed out on the, if you like, the um, the golden, golden generation. generation. Yeah. yeah. Maybe sort of, maybe the very tail end of it, perhaps. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. I, I was fortunate I was able to watch an old DVD copy of WrestleMania 3 that I had. Yeah. And it, I had to clean it up pretty good. I've literally not ran it in about 15 years. <laughs> oh, wow. And it didn't like playing either. I I thought this was going to work, and eventually it did finally stumble into gear and was able to watch it, although it bugged out in the last second to last match. But it was a lot of fun. And um, and it's just such, you just think about this event. To me, wrestling, it was probably the height of the pop culture of it as well. Yes. 23, 1987. Around about this time, you know, uh, Hulk Hogan was doing his his uh, yeah, his No Holds Barred um, movie, and or roughly that time anyway, maybe not exactly. next year. Yeah, next year, eighty eight. But it was that era. It was that time. Yeah, it was the same. Yeah, yeah, same sort of era. But yeah, we haven't done many shows from the eighties so far. We, um, so this is nice to go back and do what we did. I certainly did. One that I can think of, but yeah, we've done a, we've done a WCW one, I think, but that's about it. So most most of them have been in the nineties. So yeah, I, I mean, I I love this show. Um, yeah, and watching it back, I must admit, I really enjoyed it. It's been a little while since I last watched it all through, and it's just got such an incredible quality to it. The Pontiac Silverdome in Michigan. It was just unbelievable. It was massive. And yeah, I mean, it. it's the building that used to be the um, home of the Detroit Lions. Yeah. I understand. But it it's basically, it's built in a, it's built in an area that didn't really need a stadium. No. And ultimately, it just, as, as a stadium goes, it just didn't, it didn't succeed. It just wasn't viable financially. It didn't work. No sorts of reasons we're not going to go too much into it but i mean i will say like as an architect it it did interest me that i've seen a number of um, redevelopment schemes for it over the years um and some of them are quite inventive actually because it's an enormous asset and it's like well what do you do with it yeah Um, the easy answer is you just demolish it and build a park or build an enormous car park or whatever you want to do but yeah I mean, just the opening of WrestleMania three, it's just amazing. Really, yeah. see all those all those people in there. Obviously, it's got the dome yeah. overhead and the atmosphere. I mean, I just can't imagine what that would have been like. 
to actually be there. It was just, it just looks so vast and enormous, that place. I mean, they make a big deal of the attendance record, which was um, hotly disputed for quite some years, actually, yes. in terms of the actual number. And even to this day, if you, if you Google it, as I did, yeah, there are various figures that are banded around. It ranges <laughs> from the sort of 93,100 something something yeah down there's I've, some accounts insist that it was actually more like eighty two thousand. Um, yeah but it depends who you believe i mean to be honest it's hard to really know for sure um but i i mean i could well believe it i mean that, all, all i'll say is there was a shitload of people in that stadium there probably was yes yeah um, and it's not something that you saw in wrestling no on that scale i mean this is this is the thing uh, I think that the main event for this WrestleMania matched the venue because yeah. it was just Goliath. It was it was bigger than everything. Yeah, Hogan. definitely. Um, the biggest stage of all time, WrestleMania three, and I think um, there are a number of matches in this event that um, even now I think they stand up as some of the all time great wrestling matches that you'll ever see. Some. Yeah. There were, I thought there were a few that that had potential to be a lot more and didn't quite produce that. And I think partly that went into booking. Um, we'll go through the matches, obviously, but um, yeah, the opening ceremony is just—it's it, almost like to me it feels like it, it couldn't be more American. WrestleMania yeah. three, the, the presentation of the opening and um, Aretha Franklin, yeah, America the Beautiful on that amazing, beautiful you know grand piano up on that high sort of podium and a, a very very young looking Vince McMahon um, <laughs> oh God. Who yeah. must have, that must have been like the biggest day of his life maybe at that time I don't know you would have thought so absolutely yeah. to put all that together I mean I love the um in some of the the sort of intro um before anybody's packed in the stadium you've got Gene Oakland in the ring yeah he's talk, talking about and he, it's almost like a little kid getting excited to go to the fun fair <laughs> he knows it's right around the corner yeah um he was talking about yeah how all the efforts of the promoters the cable tv the, the wrestlers and, yeah, and all the people that put it together and he's like oh there's over 300 miles of cable yeah. strewn all these places <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, oh, I'm not gonna walk it off <laughs> um it was just great, just the, the way they, they opened it out, the, the look of it, the feel of it, the sound of it, just it, it, visually it was just a really compelling opening yeah. to WrestleMania 3. And it, yeah, it really kicked off in a lot of style, and just the, the kind of 80s pop um, of the, I suppose, the, the theme, the WrestleMania theme, or the, you know, the intro to WrestleMania. Yeah. It couldn't be more 1980s. Just epic. I just, I just don't think I can see a time that the wrestling was bigger than that moment for oh. me. That's that's what it means to me anyway. That's just how I see it. it just, yeah, it's also just it's the quality of the matches. So many of them were just that amazing. Yes. Yeah. Even some that maybe like as wrestling spectacles weren't the highest, but some of them, you know, um, I really loved. Um, Junkyard Dog and Harley Race. It wasn't a very long man. <laughs> yeah. I just loved it. I yeah. loved it. The crowd loved it. And it was just really good to watch it back. And um, yeah, the the way they presented it is brilliant. I mean, you've got Gorilla, you've got um, Lord Alfred Hayes. Oh. At the beginning. You don't you don't see much of Lord Alfred Hayes. No. Throughout the rest of the show, but the, you know, he's talk, talking about uh, WrestleMania, and that was a very big event to put that together. And then we, <laughs> from there, we move on to uh, WrestleMania Two, which was in uh, three <laughs> different locations. Uh, you were in Chicago, and yeah, you know, that, that was that was where we saw one of the greatest shocks of all when the when the British Bulldogs. <laughs> 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 It's just brilliant. And then you got um obviously Gorilla and Jesse. Yeah. And about the broadcast. And as as I said recently in, in um in our other episode, um 
which was uh, uh, Bash at the Beach. Beach 19... Blast. Beach Blast, excuse me. There you go. See, I, I can never yeah. even watch Right <laughs> down okay. paper. You know what I'm like. That's okay. I, I, made, I made the point then that um, as, good, as great as JR is, yeah. at that point in his career, he, he couldn't quite have the same dynamic with Jesse that I think Gorilla could. And it's having recently watched the WCW pay-per-view and, yeah, and I've obviously got that fresh in my mind still. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was quite noticeable just like the, with Gorilla being an ex-wrestler and Jesse being a wrestler, they could have that colour commentary, um, play-by-play dynamic, but with a wrestling perspective as well. I mean, he was just constantly ribbing gorilla all the time about oh, you you can't you can't tell me you you never elbowed somebody <laughs> or you ripped somebody <laughs> to ice gorilla you can't tell me that he's like i may resemble that remark jess <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh dear. yeah yeah gorilla and jesse were great together um i yeah. mean you, you do a full episode just on the wisecracks of jesse <laughs> <laughs> yes uh he did some great stuff jesse did um but, yeah, no. that they say in the commentary there's um uh, and in fairness it's not actually he that says it but uh in the um in the king kong bundy uh versus um hillbilly jim and with the yeah they, they used to work midgets yeah <laughs> um, I, I look i listened to that and i just thought oh that wouldn't fly very well today <laughs> no no you can't use the m word anymore you have to use the little people terminology <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, it's brilliant when um, Bobby Heenan decides just for just for fun, just for kicks. Um, at this, I think it might have been maybe at the start of the Harley race match. Yeah. He just jumps on the headset briefly and and he's talking about how great things are going and and all the rest. And, and then yeah. um, he's like calling him out for his bullshit. And he's like, hang on a minute. Your guy, your guy didn't win. You know, Her- Hercules didn't win. It's like, oh, yeah. I wasn't. You know, that was that was a draw. That was yeah. That was, <laughs> he, he didn't beat him. So yeah, I'm, I, yeah. So I, I won that one. And, um, <laughs> and he said, well, "Well, what about King Kong Bundy? He got <laughs> lost." And he goes, "He goes. Well, I wasn't out there. I, I have nothing to do with midgets. I, 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 I have nothing to do with them. That's not me." <laughs> yeah. Oh God, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but... What a spectacle there. I mean. Um, yeah, geez. I mean, I, I guess we'll, I guess we'll just do what we normally do and talk about some of the matches. But, um, yeah, as a, yeah, as an event, as a, as a statement. I mean, WrestleMania three. But you can no doubt with your more recent um, experience of wrestling, sort of post post nineteen ninety eight, from my perspective, and thereafter, which I I know almost well very little about at times. Um, I'm sure that they've been to massive venues and they've tried to yeah them that. But uh, in terms of pop culture and the, it was all all the ingredients were there and they all fused at the right time. You had you had the right you had the right talent, the right booking for the most part, <laughs> and um, the, the biggest stage. And as I, as I said, I, I think the main event really was the cherry on the icing on this one. I think you had. Um, you know, the two biggest titanic forces of all time in there against each other. Um, Andre the Giant, who'd never been beaten. Hulk Hogan, who was the champion in, in the middle of a nice, healthy run, but literally no one gave him a chance. Yeah. And um, just the way the story's told in the ring. Um, I just don't, I honestly just can't think of any single moment in wrestling that was bigger than that. I, I just well, really can't. Okay. No, I get that. I get that point. I mean, that's my own. That's my own point of view. It's not to say that. You're, <laughs> no. You're, I mean, you're, I'm right or vice versa. It's just, I, I. That's what it means to me. That, that's all. And um, I get that. I mean, I, I've seen 41 WrestleManias and uh, hmm. WrestleMania three, and the main event of this is probably in the top five. Still, the top five WrestleManias that they've been. Um, in in my opinion, um, there have been some good WrestleManias, and there have been some terrible ones. Forty plus, so 
Yeah, well, we've covered we've covered um, we've covered WrestleMania. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's usually right at the top of a list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, WrestleMania three for me. I mean, I remember seeing it when I was like. I think I'd seen it after like WrestleMania seven and stuff like that because it was take, took a while took a while to get the VHS copy of it. But um, considering what WrestleMania, what a gamble WrestleMania the first one was, and then the second one was okay, but I, I don't know that wasn't really one of the best WrestleManias they've done. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. They tried to. They were just trying to be. I think and, and at the time I'm sure it all made sense um yeah what was it Bundy and Hogan in Steel Cage was the main event yeah which is probably the goal of King Kong Bundy's career I'd imagine yeah um <laughs> yeah but um I just thought, even just the way um Lord Alfred Hayes describes it at the opening of this show yeah, he's talking about how yeah the, the different venues and how hard that was to put it all together if you're yeah. paying for the ticket for WrestleMania 2 you want to see all the matches and you can't uh, I know they had like closed circuit television and all the rest of it, but that's yeah. Who wants that? Um, yeah. I don't think it was. I, mean, I have. I haven't seen. I probably haven't seen WrestleMania two in about yes, probably close to thirty years. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time, but I, I do remember just a general feeling of it's. It was really disjointed and didn't quite have the oomph. No. Um, I mean, you can't. Compared to WrestleMania three, that said, no. it was it just feels like I, I, in fact, other than the the Hogan Bundy main event, I actually struggled to remember what most of the card was for WrestleMania two. Yeah, the board um, and the Heart Foundation um, for the tag titles, which was probably one of yeah. the better better matches. No, actually, it wasn't the Bulldogs and the Heart Foundation, was it? It was it was the Dream Team against oh, the, the Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah, but they were the title I think, didn't they? The yes. Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think WrestleMania two. I think that was. I think that was the, the Hitman's first WrestleMania. Was yeah. WrestleMania two. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, they were in. They were in the. They were in the uh, over the top rope match with Andre, where Andre won it because of the. Yeah, that's so. right. He. Um, there's a good. There's a really good story of actually that I've, I've heard Brett talk about that he he almost had a one on one singles match with. Um, uh, Ricky Steamboat at WrestleMania right. two. Oh, okay. Um, and on one of these kids is um uh, his DVD that he released um, sort of mid two thousands. Yeah. There's a match that he has with Steamboat, which is pretty epic. And um, it, I, I can't remember how or why it fell through, but it it was almost put on the WrestleMania two card. It oh, okay. didn't happen, which I think. I, I think that would have been a really amazing match, and I think, it, and you never know, it might have even been the kind of match, the yeah, you know, with the right exposure at the right time, it might have actually brought a little bit sooner than he was launched. Yeah, as a, you know, because he had that ability. I did. Um, you never. Know. Yeah, I mean, looking looking at um, a WrestleMania three, is like you certainly get a real sense of being a Cajun. When you watch watch the intro and and um, yeah, it starts to kick off, and you just see the vast sort of um, shots from you know, the camera works. Actually, I, I find it quite interesting the camera work, even just inside. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of shots, and I, th- I I was trying to figure out why it was drawing my eye to it so much, and I think it's just it was just literally the sense of perspective behind the ring, the crowd that sort of went back so far. Yeah, beyond behind the behind the camera behind the ring, and um, you saw these shots. They were almost sort of you know, full pan, um, almost on wide screen shots of the the whole ring. You see, you see all all the ropes sort of square on, and a lot of the action. And then obviously, you know, just I, I thought it was shot in a quite an interesting way. You, you didn't necessarily always see. Um, that particular dynamic so much and I, th- I think it was just the place being so vast it, yeah. it did feel you, you certainly got that sense sense of sort of theatrical um presentation and it, it felt it felt massive it was massive 
<laughs> it was definitely yeah so we can we can start by uh, the first match because there's there's 12 matches on the card um the first match was is a can-am connection versus bob bob orton and the magnificent morocco with mr fuji <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> We've got the we've got the original excellence of execution as Gorilla called him on on, on true. Yes. Tom Zink. Yes. And, yes. Uh, Rick Bell. And um yeah, really well put together guys, Can Am Connection. They're another one that I think at this time, nineteen eighty seven, again I I would say in terms of tag team competition, I don't know that it was any better than this time. They were because even Lord Alfred Hayes says right at the opening of the show, yeah, there's a lot of very good teams. Uh, and and that was true. It was pretty accurate. There were. There are a lot of great teams at that time. Yeah, this as as a match, I, I thought it was um I thought it was all right as as an opener, actually. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was pretty um, decent. It's a couple of good sort of um flips. Yeah. Um yeah. Trying to, and the cameraman almost gets taken out actually at one point. It's quite yeah. funny. <laughs> God. It's, it's, I can't remember who it was. You could, uh, somebody got flipped over and um, yeah. fell pretty hard, and they just kind of bumped forward and then he fell out of the ring and onto the cameraman. That was quite was quite funny, <laughs> but it, it was decent. It was a good, good, energetic opening match. Yeah. Not necessarily being a major classic i thought they did pretty well you think about all these guys in the ring they would have all just been so happy to be there because they would have known that yeah they would have been getting um a good a good payday for the most part you would think anyway so um yeah they they all look, looked like they were really enjoying being there yeah and the, the first time it, i remember yeah the first time i remember hearing about tom zank wasn't the WrestleMania free it was getting his wcw action figure and i was like who's this guy never never heard of him and then obviously <laughs> saw him on wcw like capital combat and then obviously then then when i first saw wrestling free i thought like, tom zenk was in the wwf what why did he leave that <laughs> it's like it's what? Well, we, um, we were talking about this a couple of days ago because i you just finished watching it and i started watching yeah. it and i think i made a comment to you as well about this um yeah, he was good. He was, but I think he wanted to. He wanted to make more money, in, and he he wanted more. Yeah, I think he had a pay dispute, but he, he wanted more money, and he ended up going to like uh, all Japan Pro Wrestling, and then I think went back to. I think he ended up in the AWA, um, which we don't know much about because we never really saw it, and then he ended up in WCW in like eighteen eighty nine. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> He's a smart guy. I mean, I, I, I do have to respect a lot of the wrestlers that maybe weren't always in the spotlight because they chose not to be, because they chose better pay to wear. So, yeah, ultimately, they, they were still doing what they wanted to do. They yeah. got doing. And they got paid and they looked after themselves and their families. And, yeah, that I would say that's, that's pretty smart. Yeah, no, true, true. And, uh, Rick, Rick Martel would go on to form another tag team with another guy who looked a little bit like Tom Zenk, Tito Santana, and became Strike Force. So um, it worked out well for Rick. <laughs> so, um, Rick, uh, well, Rick. I've seen. Well, no doubt, we'll one day we'll probably do WrestleMania Five. I'm sure, but um, yeah, that in terms of heel turns, um, not necessarily just tag matches, but in terms of heel turns, I, I think that one. That one at WrestleMania Five was right up there. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, Rick Martel. I mean, I don't think he ever. I don't think he could ever become a babyface after how dastardly he behaved at WrestleMania <laughs> Five. <laughs> no, so, but um, yeah, that was it was a pretty decent match. Morocco and Orton were a couple of good hands as well. A couple of good heels in the in the eighties as well. So, um, and they had Mister Fuji as a manager as well. So, um, yeah, and I love. How he, he he gets he has to get in his deep shots as well. Oh, yeah. He's brilliant at that. <laughs> yes. he's an evil, an evil Oriental looking man. Yeah. Um, yes. with, with the cane, yeah, you know, like the creepy guy from Poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's out there. He's managing 
he's great Fuji. You gotta love yeah. Yeah, for, for, for what he was doing. I'm just trying to remember. I must I must I've just got a complete mind um blank right now. I can't remember the damn finish and I only watched it two days ago. What happened? I'm pretty sure like Tom Zink does like a splash onto like Morocco or, or Autumn, one of the two, and pins him. I think that's how it ends. I thought they won it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, just, I was just enjoying the match. Really. <laughs> yeah, in a way, we won that match really. But um, yeah, I thought it was decent. I thought it was yeah. There, there was a lot of effort and they were they were pumped up for it. And that yeah, um, yeah. Rick, Rick Martel, good body language and um, application. Both. I mean, yeah. Gorilla called Tom the excellence of execution. I mean, that to me just that. That tells you, obviously, he was technically very, very good. Yeah. So, you know, that was, that was a really that was good opening. Very good opening. Yeah. Well, then we moved on to the next match, which was Hercules. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed the interview with Bobby Heenan and <laughs> Hercules. Um, really... Yeah, back in the WrestleMania event center, which is basically just like a cardboard um, <laughs> yeah. printed drop. Um, yeah, you got yeah Bobby Heenan and as well so this this classic heel promo. Yes, yeah. Uh, from Hercules, I struggled with it a little bit because I'm thinking <laughs> if I had watched this when I was five and a half years old, I would have thought this was great. But yeah. at the same time, as an, very very difficult for me to listen to this guy Hercules talk about how he actually did pull down the pillars of Rome like he was really there. In character, yeah. like he, he was a, <laughs> yeah. a god, and uh, yeah, I had a bit of trouble with that, but it was all good fun, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, yeah, he even he, he, talking about get it right, Auckland, it is Billy Jerk Haynes, yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> Billy, oh, Jer- Billy Jack, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, yeah, Billy Jack Haynes, who was uh. A strange one we didn't know much about i mean i'd never heard of billy jack haynes until i'd seen wrestlemania 3 so i didn't really know much about him he, he had he, i don't know he, he had a good body but he was like i guess he could kind of wrestle as well but um do you know what uh, just taking one look at him in this single in this one event this one match yeah let's tell you can just tell he was he came across in all in all ways like he was a little bit unhinged and maybe a little bit of a loose cannon yeah. and I imagine he's the sort of guy that probably would have been very easy to fall out with um backstage with the promoters and he would have been i, I can just i shouldn't say i'm just judging him on his appearance and his and his, and his manner which is not fair but um that's the way i feel motherfucker and that's just my, <laughs> my that's fair enough i don't know i mean let's face it he he didn't stick around long, did he? And he, yeah, Hercules did for a little while. Hercules was there after about like ninety two, I think. And yeah, he, I mean, you got to give him credit. He, he stuck around for a long time. Yeah, comparatively, but yeah, Billy, Billy, Billy Jack Haynes. My, to be honest, my only real memory of him is this. I, yeah. I don't, was he at WrestleMania four? I don't even think he. No, I think he'd left by then. Yeah, he wasn't around long. Um, but I, I really liked it though. It was um, it was a rivalry. Obviously, it was a heel versus babyface, but it was about the full yeah you know, the um, the full Nelson. Yeah, yeah. It was a strange, strange feud in my opinion. But yeah, they were fighting over a finishing hole, finishing hold that they both did. They, they sell it for me because they're both really into it and they're they're pretty fired up and they they come across like they hate each other and they yeah, just, yeah. they're the best and you know, only one can do the hold and. Yeah, he eventually, I mean, as the match goes, um, it's, it doesn't feel like it was terribly long, actually, as a match, but um, almost goes Billy Jack's way. He's, he thinks he's got him on, but as Jesse points out, he doesn't have the fingers sort of hooked and locked in the ring, and then they they take a tumble on their outside and then puts, puts it on. Hercules again this time he does have it cinched in there's you know, double counts out which is a real dumbass finish when yeah. when when you counted out both like that you think what a couple of dumbasses <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a silly finish yeah um, but uh, uh, yeah 
a moral victory in some ways. But um, as Jesse points out, yeah, but Hercules won the match after the belt. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's what counts, uh, Jesse, isn't it? That's what counts. So, yeah, it, was, uh, it was all right. It was a bit of silliness. Um, gets us two matches in. I, I did it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, it was yeah, it was a good one to watch. It was a bit of fun, and you know, Heenan is brilliant <laughs> as always. Actually, that and that's that's another thing to. It's one of the things, I, I don't know if he got the full credit he deserved, actually, but I, I think Heenan, from the minute you first see him to the very last moment of the WrestleMania, he is he is working his ass off in all things he does, in everything he says, the way he does <laughs> yeah. it, even, even just his, yeah, his presentation. Um, yeah. he's, he comes across like he's really jacked up for it. Yeah. really excited. It's the biggest match, of, yeah, it's the biggest night of his life as well. And yeah. he makes you believe it. Yeah, yeah. Is it? That's the thing. As a manager, he's doing his job. He makes you believe it. Um, and yeah, you see so many you know, appearances from him. There's, there's a bit later on when he's talking about the main event. Um, I don't know if it's on the network or not. Um, I suspect not. But certainly on the VHS, you've got Heenan talking with Gene Oakland, I think the I think the arena's empty and it's night time. Right. Um, I guess the previous evening. And um, yeah. he's about he's just talking about how momentous the whole event is. Obviously, from a heel perspective, he's he's doing this, but he's he's saying, like, yeah. I'm I'm really glad Coliseum Video are here because I want people to have documented proof for years in the years, years ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Andre would you know win the title. And I just thought I really loved that. He was just speaking to the future and yeah, you know, just trying to big up. Yeah. It's a small little thing to be saying, you know, but to me it all he knows exactly what he's he's doing. And oh yeah. And he does. Every single single thing he says, he, he's brilliant. Um he's he's working his ass off and he's selling everything and he's he's trying to he's trying to get everybody over. And he's trying to get the main event over is you know, the biggest event on the planet. And I think he's great; he does it brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. No, I get, I get that. I mean, he's a genius, to be fair. So, yeah, it's just fun. I mean, he's got the, he's got lots of little pit stops along the way in his various other interests, <laughs> yeah. uh, other matches. And yeah, the, this one, um, he's not out. I don't, don't think he was out at ringside. I think that. he was. Yeah, yeah. Who was there? Was he for Billy Jack and Hercules? He was, yeah. He misses the next one. He, the he next one, yeah, yeah. So we move. The next one was Hillbilly Jim, the Haiti Kid, and Little Beaver against King Kong Bundy, Little Tokyo, and Lord Littlebrook. He um, he <laughs> does actually cheap shot Billy Jack at the end of the match. And he, yes, he yeah. almost gets in, but he backs yeah. off. I think um, they don't go anywhere there. It would have been. It would have been kind of fun to see Heenan take a bump, although knowing what we know now, I would have preferred him never to take any bumps. Um, but um, yeah, maybe that would have been a bit too much too soon for this show. I, th- I think he needed to be a little bit of a, you know, a weasel and yeah. a little bit smug right up until the main event because you wanted him to go in there full of smugness and confidence. And yeah, so yeah. I, I think they got that right. They didn't let Billy Jack touch him in match yeah. two. It's probably the right thing to do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then we had the six-man tag, which uh, was was okay. Um, Hillbilly Jim, um, I didn't really know much about. Obviously, I knew he came back. I knew he came back with the Godwins, but I hadn't seen much of him in in the old WWF. So uh, Bundy, we knew about, um, and I, I had never heard of any of the uh, the midgets that were involved um, in these matches. So, um. Midway through the match, there's an interview with um, with uh, Hillbilly Jim and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, just remind me, George was it? Some of this um, very young. Um, Greg the George. Say that again. Greg the George. Greg the George. Greg, Greg the George. George. Yeah. yeah. I can remember um, thinking, I, I I like that guy. He's 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 this real. He's this young guy, and he's um, yeah. He's very wet behind the ears in a way, but he's just, I don't know, he reminded me of that guy from um, 
almost like that guy from National Lampoon Animal House. I think <laughs> right. Yeah, the guy. Oh god, what's his name? Is it Otter? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh, yeah, do you know the guy I'm talking about? He just sort of reminded yeah, me yeah. of a young version of him um, with a lot of potential, but uh, <laughs> he was very kind of wet behind the ears. But um, it, it was almost like the, a 1980s version of Todd Pettengill. <laughs> nice. And I, I, I just kind of liked him. He did stick around for a little while. Yeah, he was there think, for a while. Yeah, but he, he never really, I, I would say, probably never really quite made it, no. uh, which I, I think is a little bit of a shame. Um, maybe, maybe at a different time he, he could have um, could have emerged. But uh, yeah, others came and went. That you did. Sean Mooney did a good job after him. So I thought. Yeah, Sean Mooney was brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah, even Tony Tony Schiavone. He came yeah. in. Yeah, Tony did. Tony, yeah. 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 Must so. have been Southern draw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the the match basically is the six man ends when King Kong Bundy, like, he elbows, um, I think it's like the Haiti kid, I think. And his 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 little midget men turn on him. And they, One of you them know. Little Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, Bob, Bob Uke is on. Uh, oh, <laughs> Bob. Yeah. Briefly. And, and yeah, you got to love Bob Uke is brilliant. Um, he, has, uh, he does a few great things later on as well. But um, yeah. Yeah, this is this is a lot of fun. This match, he's in there, and um, but going back to um, that interview, um, he mentions Hillbilly Jim mentions like, oh, I'm not going to let King Kong Bundy like, hurt my guys. You know, I've got something up my sleeve. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, um, and he goes like, yeah, it's certainly been a big issue. That crushing factor. We'll see if it develops. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Fun. It's, it's it's funny though because yeah, King Kong Bundy is it's not actually terribly nice, um, which is yeah, it's classic hill yeah. behavior. But I like that um, all of the little guys, you know, both teams, literally everybody turns on Bundy for yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he he picks up. He, I want to say it was a little Beaver. He picks up. I could be probably. Wrong. Could um, be. So yeah, he picks this this poor little. <laughs> little guy up what looks like you know off the top of the empire state building just like slams him <laughs> down to the canvas and then he does drop a massive elbow on him and yes. then he does a move like the poor poor thing's dead yeah and uh, yeah they're they're all shouting at him and um he gets himself disqualified bundy and it's yeah, it's a little bit of a cheap way to end the match but yeah. uh, i guess yeah at the end of the day can't be too squeamish you know that in any event some of the heels are going to win, aren't they? So, yeah, exactly. In this case, he didn't win. He, he got DQ'd, but um, it was a. It, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I'll just say it was an attraction match. Yes. Yeah. I could. I could have added another word along with that, <laughs> which I won't. Yeah. No, I get um, that. <laughs> <laughs> but, it was fun. It was a bit of fun. I don't know if it was WrestleMania material, but it was probably it was, not. <laughs> um, I mean, Hillbilly Jim. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I'd seen a little bit of him in the eighties. Um, yeah, from watching old VHS and reruns and so on. But um, I think he was he was okay as a wrestler. But I don't think he was ever pushed. I don't think he was even really mid card. Not really. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, he, he was a he was a little bit of a country boy sort of fan favourite. I think Vince McMahon always liked him. Yeah, and he yeah. certainly had um, you know, a lot of history. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I think that's about all I can really add to that match. No problem, no problem. I mean, we'll move on to the next match, which is the match you mentioned earlier, which was Harley Race. Sorry, King Harley Race um, with Bobby Heaton and the fabulous Moolah or Queen Moolah. Um, taking on the junk junkyard dog GAYD and the loser must bow match. Um, this match. This, this wasn't this wasn't the Harley Race fans knew back in the NWA though. <laughs> it wasn't like ex NWA World Champion Harley Race. This was this was gimmick WWF Harley Race. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's something really odd about listening to Harley Race come down to ringside in the, you know that vast arena 
the Jerry original. Lawler's music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll we'll call it the original Jerry Lawler music now. Yeah. Yeah, he might say, well, actually, no, it was mine first. Yeah. Jerry Stoll. Yeah, it's quite funny. And um, I don't know what music it was on the network, but um, the JYD music, when he comes down, is super cool, super 80s. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was great. It, and, yeah, as as a match goes, I th- yeah, it's probably it's probably my favourite Junkyard Dog memory, actually, this one. Yeah. I always really love this um, match. It's just a lot of fun. Um, and you've got Fabulous Moolah. Um, talking before the match with Oakland and, and Harley Race next to next to her about to, you know, he going back down and he's, he's going about the game as he's <laughs> <been here." laughs> oh yeah that was a very good impression of Fabulous Moolah <laughs> yeah well um, <laughs> the funny thing is uh, other than the finish I can't remember too much. I only watched it two days ago. But I don't actually remember that much about uh, the match all that well because it it didn't actually last long. No, it's about a four minute match. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. Um, but it's a classic, uh, you know, uh, illegal pin. You know, uses yeah. the, the um, ropes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, cheats. Um, and. As uh, Howard Finkel says, you know, as stipulated, he now yeah, junkyard dog now has to bow to the king. So he gets his robe on, he gets his crown on, Harley racing, and they yeah, just sing. He does decide. a curtsy to him. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does a half ass curtsy. I mean, that's one thing. And then turns yeah, he turns his back on JYD, and he yeah, it's completely yeah. nails it, and yeah. it's, uh, Harley race sells it epically. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He still his cra- um his um robe or something at the end of it or something. I yeah, can't remember. The robe. I was I was myself. <coughs> did he not take the crown? I, I I must have misremembered. I always thought he took the crown, but he didn't. He tried um, to take the crown, I think, but um he ended up with a robe instead. Yeah, but it felt like a moral victory for him, and the crowd loved it. They absolutely yeah, yeah. loved it. They did. Um, yeah, he had to bow, but uh, yeah, yeah, obviously Harley Race had to pay the price. And yeah. they've got um, they've got this brilliant um, uh, little miniature ring. Um, oh, those cart motorized carts that they used to come down to the ring to, or whatever the hell you call that thing. <laughs> um, and that's used the whole night because I mean yeah. it's just massive, massive place. It would have taken forever to walk down the aisle. Only um, a couple, only a couple of wrestlers walked. Well, walk slash run down the aisle. That's Hogan and Piper. Yeah, that's true. Actually, when you think about it. Um, although someone did have to take a big walk of shame, slick. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He did. Yeah, uh, this <laughs> yeah, we'll tore up. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, uh, yeah, that was. I really enjoyed that because when when Junkyard Dog gets gets into the um gets into the little mini ring and he's He's wheeled away. Um, yeah, the crowd. You could just hear they absolutely adored him. They loved it. Loved it. Yes. He got a massive pop. Yeah, he was he was big and he was over in eighties in the eighties. JYD. Yeah, he was. He's definitely it's definitely my favourite JYD memory. Um, and yeah. unfortunately, I don't really have that many. Um, no. But this this is certainly my favourite. Definitely, I really enjoyed it. It was a good match. A lot of fun. Tremendous, tremendous stuff. So the next match was the Dream Team against the Rougeau brothers, which um, the Dream Team consisted of Greg the Hammer Valentine and Bruce Beefcake. They had Johnny Valiant and Dino Bravo with them, and the Rougeau, Rougeau brothers were Jacques and Raymond Rougeau. This was before yeah. they became heels and became the fabulous Rougeaus. They were actually faces back then there's in 87. Couple, there's a couple of, there's some interesting things in this in this match. There's one spot. I wonder if you picked up on it as well, but... Um, there's a few things in this WrestleMania that while I said before there's some really amazing tag teams there's yeah. a few of the matches just one or two of the matches anyway and I think this is one where you've got maybe the opening match was the same you had established very very good tag teams Can-Am Connection and in this case you had the Rougeos. Um their opponents were kind of felt sort of more makeshift tag team opponents they weren't necessarily um but- great tag team opponents but it was in it was interesting i mean the dream team had been 
a tag team for two years. So I don't know that they were really up there though in terms of like, no, no, no. I know what you mean, but yeah, you know they've been they yeah. looked pork and cheese to me. They didn't really look. That's maybe that's why where I'm coming from. They looked Probably, a bit. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Like they didn't. They were like a square peg in a round hole. They just didn't quite look right together as a tag team. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, yeah. Now I think it's I think it's um, Jacques Rougeau. He's up on. He finds himself. It's near the end of the match. He finds himself on the top turnbuckle. Yeah. And I think Ray, Ray's got. Um, I'm trying to. It might have been. I can't remember if it was Greg on his shoulders or not. But anyway, um, basically Jacques just launches himself off the top turnbuckle, right. and basically his feet are supposed to go over. The, Valentine's shoulders and then just smash him down to the ring. But he he almost he's half screws it up and his his left knee. I'm amazed he didn't break his cheekbone. Right. He really smash he smashes him really hard. It looks stiff as hell. I hope he didn't actually injure it, but it, it looks really bad. And then uh, yeah, they're, they're looking great, the Rougeos. And then yeah, um, yeah, they they come up short. They get they they just get done. Don't they? And, they do, yeah, yeah. Although I think there's a there's a miscommunication between ha- the Val- Greg Valentine and Beefcake, which gets Dino Bravo and that irate, and they leave Beefcake behind at the end. But yeah, and that's that they don't quite explain it very well, and even even um, Jesse's really confused. Yeah, yeah it's like what what's the matter? What are they having? What are they having to go with Beefcake for? What did he do? Yeah. <laughs> It was in a funny way. I might as well mention it because why not? Um, yeah. It sort of reminded me of when Jimmy Hart turned from a heel manager to a face manager when he's tr- he's pleading with Money Inc. not to oh, smash. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of like you wouldn't expect him to just suddenly morally object. No, having no. behaved so badly for so many years, but but that without reason. He just does, and yeah. you just go along with it and bite it. And like, oh no, no, he actually is a decent guy after all. And yeah, uh, yeah Beefcake does the same. He just very subtly turns face. So it, it's it is quite cool when you see that because it is. Um, I always I always liked a good turn, um, yeah. whether it was one way or the other way. I, I think um, I was. I, I, I never enjoy it more when it's a when it's a heel turn into a baby face. They're, I think those are the those are the most fun. They're the best ones. Yeah. For, uh, when it's the other way around, it's always just shocking. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then it sets up a big program. Yeah, and that's all good stuff. Uh, I, I enjoyed the the face turn. Oh yeah, that was the. That's fun because you don't expect it actually. No. No. Un- unlike a lot of people, I I don't hate beefcake. I never have. No, no, Beefcake's pretty decent. It was a decent, decent um, wrestler. I think, so. yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't put him in my top ten of all time, but you know, he's uh, no. Not, he's. I wouldn't even say he's particularly one of my favourite wrestlers, but I, I didn't mind. He did a job. He did a job. That's what he was there for. So, I mean, as, as you know, because when we talked about WrestleMania Nine, it was my first ever pay per view. Yes. Yeah. And obviously, I, I knew who Hulk Hogan was, and I was really into Hogan at WrestleMania 9, and I, I thought it was, I, I digress, but um, <laughs> yeah, Beef, Beefcake was there as well. So, you know, and, and I saw how that all unfolded and the story and the build up. And Yeah. So I, I don't have any hostility towards him, I and mean, people give him a lot of crap for being um, so far in Hogan's pocket and all the rest of it. And, you know, like Hogan's bag, man. And, yeah. Favoritism. <laughs> yeah. Tag along and, and all that sort of stuff, and yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, I always thought Triple H was like that with Shawn Michaels, <laughs> um, yeah. certainly in the beginning. Yeah, that's oh, a story. Fair play. Even, even Double J did, as he said in his um, late '97 um, interviews, his um, sort of word association. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. That's <laughs> all right. Well, we'll, we'll move on to the next match, which uh, was uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper in his farewell match against Adrian Adonis in a hair versus hair match. It's, this is a crazy match. Yes. It's a, it's a great one. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Did, did you see the promo on the network version with Piper talking at the pre 
um, WrestleMania uh, conference about how I w- I am retiring. This will be the last one. I have. It's not on the network, but I have seen oh, it. Yeah. He does he basically says, "Yeah, I am retiring," um, yeah. and, and he's going to look forward to going home and spending time with his with his kids and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, yeah it, it, they handle that really well. Now, it's amazing. In reality, he was just off to make um, make some. Like, they live in the how comes the frog town yeah i mean i can't i mean they live's great i mean it's john carpenter movie for christ's sake yeah <laughs> less said about how comes the frog town the better i mean that's i mean even Roddy piper <laughs> tried to disassociate himself to some extent um so yeah in, in real life he was he was not necessarily really retiring but no None of us were to know that, and that's that's how they build it, that's how they pushed it, and that's how it all came across in the end. And he finds himself in a really bizarre match with it's it's like a it's like a weird fucked up fusion of the narcissist Lex Luger and Ric Flair in one person in Adrian Adopt. Yeah. It's just it's weird. I mean he's I mean, I don't know if he's supposed to be ironic or what. <laughs> I think so. Yes, that's that's the gimmick, but yeah, uh, Adrian and Donnelly. I mean, he, again, he's before my time, really. Um, yeah, didn't really see much of him, but uh, yeah, he, he's a classic um, scumbag heel, isn't he? He's great. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah if he's he's trying to fuck with Piper, and and he he does actually have a lot of tools. He, he does some damage in this match to Piper. Yeah, uh, I mean, he. Oh God, there's some really great little spots and some of it, it, it you can almost miss it you know, really easily but there's this he gives him a shot to the guts outside the ring and the mic just picks up an audible kind of like oh! you know he's really <laughs> yeah. but you can hardly hear it but you can when you can pick up on it you just tell it was just really well done and um Piper sells brilliantly in this match. He really comes across like he's in a torture chamber. He's in tremendous pain. He's having shit being out of it. Um, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, as the match goes, you know, he finds himself, Piper finds himself in the sleeper and he's pretty much fading out. And the way it's told, Adonis, he, he lets him go. I'm trying to remember why he let him go, actually. Um, I think he thought he was out. I think he thought he was beaten. I think he thought, he thought he'd already won it. He thought yeah. he pulled it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, then he paid for it because yeah, Piper gets up fairly quickly and you know, yeah, slaps the move on him and and mm-hmm. yeah, he passes, so called passes out. And then uh, the stipulation was uh, yeah, he had to have his hair cut. Yeah. And then B comes out, cuts his hair, and and then it's just it's just hilarious watching Piper. <laughs> taught him after after he's had his hair all, all cut up and messed up yeah. he shows in the mirror and he just freaks and it's yeah it's, <laughs> it's hilarious um yeah i mean gorilla's quite complimentary about piper i mean he yeah you know, um jesse's obviously scathing he's like oh cheap shot yeah <laughs> yes. and all the rest yeah oh <laughs> classic match to be fair trade matches yeah it, it actually it was a lot better than I would have expected it to be. Yeah. Um, and I have to give credit to Adrian Adonis and Piper. I think they do pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's definitely. a very physical match. Very physical match. And yeah. It's, it's a contrast, isn't it? You look at all the matches we've talked about so far, there's an awful lot of contrast in terms of styles and storytelling, and there's just a lot of different things going on. It tells you, yeah, there's quite rich variety and the talent pool that they had the matches that they were pulling off this one was a good one yeah definitely uh, the, the next match we'll move on to was uh, the six man tag with Danny Davis or dangerous Danny Davis and the Hart Foundation against Tito Santana and the British Bulldogs which uh, I don't know this yeah. match was pretty with decent the lovely, with the lovely Mary Hart on commentary oh, um, yes. and Bob um, is, is Bob Uecker up there at that point? Maybe I think, not. Maybe I don't so. think so. Yeah, I think Bob Uecker wasn't there. But Mary Hart, who, in her words, is no relation to Jimmy Hart. <laughs> uh, we did. Uh, we, we we skipped over it. But um, right before the Harley race match, um, oh, 
you Yuka is in the commentary um seat and he and he says i gotta get with moolah she's coming i gotta get down there i gotta get oh, with yeah. moolah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well they are both um of that age maybe so it's true I mean, yeah that's true <laughs> do you know i thought do you know what i love bob you gotta love bob uk so you go bob i, I don't mind <laughs> you go yeah. for it that yeah, exactly. so you go for it. Well, oh. we want you to be happy <laughs> good, luck. Uh, good luck that was a lot of fun but yeah, yeah. so that yeah this I, I don't know what your thoughts are on this but I, and maybe it's looking back with the benefit of hindsight but i know there was a big story about how danny davis screwed the bulldogs out of the tag titles and the heart yeah. foundation won them and yeah um this is effectively a effectively a handicap match of sorts isn't it yeah well yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, um, just look at this. I think it was WrestleMania three. It, it's such a shame that they they booked this match the way they did. I would have loved to have just seen the Heart Foundation versus the Bulldogs and just forget all the other bullshit. Actually, um, yeah. Now, in saying in saying that, they do go down that track and actually is pretty good because they do a great job of beating the shit out of Danny Davis. Yes, in this match, he takes some really shots especially like dynamite's <laughs> got him on the it looks like he's actually closed his fist and he's just like punching him again, i wouldn't be again, surprised again. he's again. not actually punching it <laughs> i wouldn't be yeah i mean it looked real stiff the, the only thing that they they screwed up for me that was the famous bulldog um you know lift him high up high up high up over his yeah, shoulder yeah. and, and suplex him back and he as as we know is it what he was possibly most famous for in some ways was the you know the length of time he held him the up the elevation for maybe five to ten seconds and then drop him Danny Davis doesn't do that his legs just kind of flop back and the board I was just like oh this I'll just drop you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> quite fun oh dear yeah I mean I mean, you got you got the Bulldogs, Tito and Brett and Jim are both all all of them are great competitors. And Danny Davis, who's like, I don't know, I guess he was a he was a referee and he was a trained wrestler. But I mean, again, it's like I I get the storyline where like he's helping like the Heart Foundation, and I think he screws Tito out of a match or something, which is why he's in the match. Um, yeah. I think. Um, I just I, I don't know I mean I, I, I get I mean they the, the the there was a lot of good action I mean whenever the Hart Foundation are in the ring against the Bulldogs it's they're great but I mean um not this time no T- I mean, not this time. <laughs> it's it's an attraction match that's what it became that's why I don't yeah. like it it was an attraction match and the, the yeah. thing is if you look at it for what it delivered with the Danny David stuff it's actually brilliant in that sense because it does everything that it's supposed to do yeah and you can't fault it in that sense but i just i just think if you'd had the bulldogs and the heart foundation in there wrestlemania 3 all bang in their prime um that could have been one of the greatest if not the greatest tag title match at wrestlemania of all time yeah i really think that could have could have been the case if they'd all just been trusted to do what they knew how to do and get all yeah. the classic wrestling. So I just wish, I wish they could have done that because I, I just believe that, that that's what would have happened. I really do. Um, it's not a disaster. It's just a shame because I don't think it, I don't think it really elevated anybody in the match. It was, just, it was almost just a cannon fodder, um, you know, fluky heel win match that you just, yeah. I don't know, it just wasn't, it didn't deliver in, enough. It had massive potential and it didn't live up to it for me, which is not to say that it was a stinker. It was not a stinker. No. Um, and the finish, when you think about the finish, yeah, Danny Davis is basically already beaten. You can see, isn't there? Yeah. Literally, if they wanted to pin, they make the point very, literally, he is finished. If you want to yeah. pin him now, you can. Yeah. Um, at least twice. And, um, Somehow there's, I mean, Neidhart's brilliant. Yeah, you know, he comes in, makes a save a couple of times, and and then at a certain point, everybody rushes in and in a massive um, kerfuffle. Yeah. Somehow, <laughs> yes. the, 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 
legendary Jimmy Hart. You got to love Jimmy Hart. He throws his megaphone in and um, <laughs> it gets used on dynamite. And Danny Davis literally flips. He just falls on top of him and pins him that way by accident, by complete fluke. And they get the win. And Jimmy Hart's brilliant the way he sells it at the end he's like screaming and just like uh, overjoyed and just can't believe it and he's just ecstatic and they and they've yeah. won and they love him. and uh yeah dynamite is like ko'd and they're all just left dejected and screwed yeah ring, <laughs> yes uh it was, it, was a, it was a good well worked yeah, finish but... yes yeah it was and also, I don't know if you know it's still not, but it's at that time of the show, you can just see the daylight starting to die off a little bit in this match. Yeah. It's getting darker. Yes, yeah, yeah. And it's building. Everything's just building and building and building to the main event. And, and, but there's still a long way to go, even between here and the main event. We're probably only about halfway through the card. Well, we, we've gone over halfway, but... Um... Match match eight is Butch Reed against Coco Beware, which is a short match. Um, I mean, I'm not sure why this. Uh, I guess it was a filler match. I think. I mean, I, I didn't mind Butch Reed. I mean, I think he went on and did a good tag 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 team with um, Ron Simmons and Doom. Um, Coco Beware. Yeah. It was an okay hand. It was an okay face, but it didn't really do a lot. In my opinion, Coco Beware. I don't know. Well, he never really got... Same. Uh, no, same. I mean, I think he was a. I think he was just a solid wrestler. Yeah. Um, of a certain time, I mean, my memories of him probably start with him and High Energy. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. No, he was a good wrestler. I mean, he actually had a really long career. Oh yeah, definitely. Very long yeah. career, and he, you know, he. he pretty well for himself and um i mean i, I liked him he was, he was decent solid um yeah I, I don't know this this one this match it's not exactly a dud because it's not a bad match but it, it just doesn't really do much for me i suppose no um in fact so less so i, I can't even remember the finish well how did I, <laughs> it's um i would have to try and remember myself um I'd say something. I think it was like a, I think he won the match with a roll up and he had a handful of tights. So I think uh, Coco went for a cross body, a high cross body, and uh, he reversed it and it was just a roll up and he just held onto his tights. So um, yeah, it was about right. yeah. And, then, and then Slick came in to attack Coco with his cane and then Tino and Santana then came in and stopped him and that's when they ripped the clothes off of Slick. <laughs> so. Well, the try he's got the he's, he's got his um he's got his straps over his shirt, yeah, and they're obviously done pretty tight. And yeah. he's he's and, it, and he's this big strong bastard. He's trying to rip the shirt off, and he can't do it. I mean, he yeah. tears it, and he makes a big mess of it. And yes. slick, he looks genuinely like he's just been assaulted, <laughs> really yeah. sort of thrown around. Yeah. Um, and he's just kind of stumbling and falling over himself, going down the really long, never-ending aisle. Yes. And um, the show, the spotlight just sort of sees him taking the sort of walk of shame back to the locker room and all beat up and a mess. And that was that was quite funny. Yeah. Because um, Slick, yeah, Slick. Um, he's got a big. Big personally, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. you got to give him some respect, I think. Oh yeah, Slick. He was a very yeah. good uh, manager, good heel manager. So um, in the eighties, he was a real good talker. And, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can understand sometimes when um, when wrestlers they're they're just not quite firing the bark and. Every now and then, you can understand why they are put with a manager because that, that yeah. can just help them slowly develop yeah. their character and their confidence and learn a few things about how to speak, if for no yeah. other reason than to have that, I suppose. Definitely. But yeah, this is right. And yeah, I think that's 
yeah, probably the slick um, was the highlight. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, it's probably what saved the match. The yes. So then um, we move on to possibly the best match of the night, where it's Ricky Stebo against Randy Savage for the uh, the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, this is um, this is unquestionably hands down the best match of the night um, for me, anyway. Wow, yeah, just what a contest, what an ath- athletic. Um, it's right up there. I mean, I would say in terms of like intercontinental one-on-one matches um, that I can think of, that and maybe Bulldog and Brett at ninety-two. I think they're they're both very yeah. close, but um, yeah, I, I love this. The, the only thing in terms of finish that I didn't quite like was that they basically had Savage elbowing boat with the ref already bumped. Yeah. So he, they they make out that he was actually quite lucky to eventually win the match. Yeah. But it just the story is just the contest and the, yeah and all the all the amazing moves and the yeah the athletic drama of it and yeah wow yeah it's it's a tough one to um to really even talk about in that sense. It's just so good. Yeah. It's a very hard one to um to explain. It's just that good. It really is. It's um well, not one I that think, you'd see very often. No. And I think you should, I think I've seen Steamboat talk about this match years later saying that um this is probably up there with like him and Ric Flair, but this is probably maybe even better, he said, because but he also said that Randy Savage was just like he always he wanted to rehearse, you know, the match and just have every single detail memorized and down to the T. Um, so, you know, he he said he was feeling the pressure because Randy was like a perfectionist and and everything that yeah. went with the match. So it was I think yeah. that's, the, that's the personality and that's the character. I think you'd never, ever want to take that away from Randy Savage because he no. just wouldn't be the same. I, I mean, yeah. I, I wish um, at whatever time period, I, I actually wish that uh, Rand, Brad had some more um, opportunities yeah. to have matches because just for the skill sets that would have been in the ring in their primes, yeah, um, yeah that, that could have been incredible as well. But I, I mean, I've said it before about Randy Savage. I've always just considered him to be like a Rolls a Rolls Royce of a wrestler, I and mean, he was just. It was just amazing. He had everything. Um, he did. He did. Um, he made it. Believe he made it to my Mount Rushmore. Yes. Yeah. Brandy. I mean, if he you've never seen, make it to most other people. No, no, he was close on mine, but I mean, it's, it's matches like this that really, yeah. um, when you take it to that level and you're that good, um, the skill and you know the craft, execution and all of it, the, the pair of them were just unbelievable i i'm not sure why they i don't know if it was randy um a little bit proud i don't know um why they tell the story of oh no you know savage had him beat clearly beat and through a little bit of good luck somehow by hook or crook steamboat eventually turned it around and and uh, basically just got a quick pin combination oh, yeah. George still went, but George the animal still got involved yeah. in the and tossed him off the top yeah. rope. Um, but I mean, I, I guess it was just like Savage's way of doing like revenge for like what he'd done to him in the months prior. So um, I think he obviously just came up with that story. Like, I don't know, unless, because again, I think Randy came up with a match. So I think maybe maybe it was Randy's intent to for it to finish that way so it did look like he was kind of lucky um but i mean again this is opinion, but uh, people disagree but um you make the guy look weak and that he doesn't deserve to win it yeah. actually strange one i, I guess. don't want to be the big pooper i don't want to be party pooper from kindergarten cop but <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> i'm the body pooper and i know and i know and people like talk about this in the park. I didn't think it 
make it make, make it look weak. Um, yeah. Not this particular, but I've similar ones that no doubt I'll get into in the future. But um, and I just think, what fucking planet are you on? Yeah, <laughs> the guy's clearly down and out, and he's beat. And obviously, you know, the only reason he's not lost the match is because the ref's down. And then yeah, yeah he goes on there and turns it all around. But I'm thinking, well, well, fuck, he doesn't deserve to win it. No, because and it, you know he really wasn't deserving. It's not like he really overcame. He had to run <laughs> luck or help from George yeah. the Animal. Yeah, I mean it was absolutely the right finish. Yeah, yeah, because it was. Yeah, Randy was the Intercontinental Champion and he lost it on the biggest stage of all. So it was massive. Yeah, it was absolutely massive. I I personally don't like the way they had the finish. I thought it was a shame. It, yeah, it, it went that way. I, th- I think they should have just carried on doing what they had been doing. And if it had just been a quick pin, I would have taken that. I would have been like, wow, what a contest. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. One of those matches, if you carry on like that, you think, you know, anyone could have won that. Could have gone either way. True. True. I mean, but again, it, you know, if you've never seen WrestleMania 3, I would I'd recommend watching this match. So, and I think people, st- I think we've had wrestlers still study the match for like the art of wrestling. Even today, yeah. they watch this match. So, there's a couple of spots from Randy. I have to, I have to point them out. I just think they're epic. Um, and you just see what looks like hundreds, if not thousands, of people. You know, camera flashes. Um, yeah. He's top turnbuckle, and he does a double axe from the top yeah. all the way outside, and he just smashes Steamboat and yeah. falls. Um, that's just it, it just look because you know how Randy used to, he had that poise yes when he was ready he just he set him up and he nailed him beautifully with that and then obviously when he drops the elbow it's it's no it's just it's one of those like it could have been a great photo on Time magazine Randy on the top rope ready to drop the elbow with all those flashes behind him and stuff it was yeah just epic I mean that's what you talk about when you when when you say you know it was the biggest stage of all it was, it was that that's what it was set up for and you had some guys that could actually produce at that level and that those guys did that Absolutely. night unbelievable Absolutely. one of the time that match yeah so we'll move on to the next match which was the honky tonk man and jake the snake roberts who had alice cooper in his corner and jimmy hart was in the corner of the honky tonk man yeah, this match just pissed me off. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was great that they had Alice Cooper there. Um, great look, great fit with Jake and all that, you know, genius move. Um, oh, honky tonk man. I don't hate him as much as I hate Double J. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's close. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I just pissed me off, and I was I was pissed off the way the match ended, and uh, I was pissed off that uh, Jake tried to smash him over the head with a guitar and missed, and he just smashed the guitar over the the ring post. And yeah, they did get Jimmy Hart. They did, Paul. yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, obviously, obviously, Honky Tonk cheats and he wins. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Jake Roberts, I mean, I must admit, um, he looks like he's in great shape here. Um, yeah, he does. For t- uh, we, we remember him sort of towards the end of his career, I suppose. Yeah. Um, really, that was more our time. But, yeah, here he's just, he's epic. I mean, you, you've heard you've heard Jim Ross, you've heard others talk about it down the years, you know, as a performer, there's in many ways, certainly for the psychology if nothing else, there's maybe no one better than Jake Roberts. Um, and he was an incredible, he was an unbelievable, brilliant wrestler as well. Um, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was another one. It was a slightly classic and slightly dumb storyline that led to the match. Obviously, just a cheap shot on the snake pit, which, by the way, they show some footage of it. So Jake getting um, Pearl Harbor by Honky Tonk. And uh, I was looking at that snake pit set and I was thinking, oh. I was almost waiting for like Captain Kirk and Spock and <laughs> Dr. 
boy to just kind of walk out because it looked like a 1960 set from Star Trek. <laughs> yes, yeah. It just looked real cheap, and terrible. Yeah, and I know Jake Jake's spoken about that uh, guitar shot from the Honky Tonk Man. He, he, the Honky Tonk Man apparently didn't gimmick the guitar, so it was a real guitar, and it smacked him on the head, and it it jarred his neck. So, yeah. He has real bad yeah, neck problems I, in that. I, I don't have much time for honky tonk, man. I do, as the years rolled by, I did actually, I started to find him a little bit endearing because he was like so cheesy and terrible. He became almost, almost, yeah. most lovable. Yeah. I never had that same feeling with Jeff Jarrett, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. God, yeah, this match just pissed me off. If I'm <laughs> That's <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> the crowd got what all the crowd really wanted to see was someone get their comeuppance and get snakes and you know, Jimmy Hart. Um, who was petrified, he was scared to death. He hated snakes. So, <laughs> the only thing that I, I thought was probably a little bit unwise, to say the least, um, uh, was obviously you got an actual snake there, yeah, real snake. Yeah, and they're agitating the snake by putting him close to someone that's kicking and screaming and obviously, yeah. Afraid. And the activity would have just agitated that snake. And I'm sure that snake was getting more and more pissed off by the drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I can understand the fear. Um, but yeah, this this match uh, annoyed me a little bit because no no payoff really. Because I, I yeah. know I know Jimmy Hart got a little bit, but. You wanted Honky Tonk to, to get his. And the fact that the guitar missed and smashed over the post, yeah, that just pissed me off. Yeah, that's fair enough. And you've got well, Alice Cooper out there as well. He, so Alice Cooper's basically mugged off as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least at least when um, WrestleMania 2, when uh, Ozzy Osbourne was there, at least the Bulldogs won. <laughs> this one is the bad lost. So, exactly. but um, yeah. Okay. And it's actually quite late in the card as well. So this should be, this should have been a really, uh, I mean, how do you follow Steamboat Savage? That's the other thing. I and mean, this one sadly yeah. falls short, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then we've got another one as well, which is a strange, a strange finish right before the main event. You've got the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Falkoff with Slick against the Killer Bees. <laughs> Second Bring, last drinking gin. Yeah. Christ. Yeah. Happened. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was never a big fan of the Sheik and Volkov. Um, the Killer Bees were a bit, uh, and again, they were, they were a big tag team in the WWF, so oh, yes, they were. Um, I, you say you weren't a fan of um, the Sheik and, and Volkov. I mean, I, I think I was, um, certainly the Sheik, anyway. Um, you have to say, first of all, because uh, just because of his history, and he was the champion and he. He launched Hulk Hogan, um, and he beat Bob Backlund. And, yeah, he is a legend. I mean, he only re- fairly recently, within I want to say within the last year or two, he passed away. Yeah. Um, and just any time you ever hear him speak, he's like, "You, you, jabroni, you lousy American jabroni." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love, I love hearing him speak. I mean, I've heard him talk shit about Hogan over the years. And, yes. Um, yeah. I still always liked him. He was a he was a brilliant, um, very strong motherfucker. Um, yes, monster heel. Yeah, um, you know he he wasn't he wasn't one of the greatest of all time. Don't get me wrong. And right. Volkov Volkov was just a product of the Cold War. Yes, yeah. Was, you know he was that classic archetype um, foreign menace. In this case, yeah, you know, Russia, and it came down to well. Actually, you're in the home of the free and the land of the brave. But um, by the way, if if you um, if you want to sing your own national anthem, forget about it. <laughs> so yeah. you're in America, pal. The funny thing about Volkov as well is that he wasn't technically a Russian anyway. <laughs> he was yeah. born in Yugoslavia, so it's like wow. <laughs> well, well um, you know, the sheik became an Iraqi. Yeah, true. <laughs> And he was Iranian, so yeah, oh. Colonel Mustafa. Yeah. I know. Oh I, God! I didn't write that shit, but somebody actually. Um, somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody booked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean this. Uh, why wouldn't you have Hacksaw actually in the match? Because he really should have been. He's basically he steals this show. Yeah. 
um well, I'd say he he steals the moment anyway so yeah it's yeah and it's a schmarz finish it's bullshit and um it's quite funny just to see Volkov sing that really brash version of the Russian national anthem. Then you see, um, and it's brilliant when <laughs> they storm the ring and he's got the two by four hacksaw and, and he clears off pretty quick in mid, yeah. mid in his song and in his you know, singing the anthem. But there's only so much you can really say about a match like this. Yeah, I mean, again, it. Duggan comes on second last. No way. No way. <laughs> Doug, Duggan comes back and hits uh, the Sheik with the two by four, and then gets disqualified. Yeah, yeah and, a, and, a, and you can't do that. Yeah, and Jesse's just there going, I don't know why these guys are, you know, buddying up to Hacksaw. He just cost them the winner's purse. It's like <laughs> point out, point out a good bit there from Jesse there. Like, why are these guys smiling? This guy just cost them the match. It's like, yeah. he's got a point. Yes, he's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. He's start to finish, he's just, yeah. That, that's the other thing with Jesse. He was, he's probably, if he hasn't just made it, or he's, he's about to make Predator at this point. Yeah. As well. Yes. I mean, he's at his absolute peak. Yeah, definitely. This time. So. Yeah. And so yeah, this yeah, so darkness has fallen. By the way, the last couple of matches, it's yeah. Don't they, then, don't they, they bring out they bring they brought out Mean Gene as well, didn't they, to announce the indoor attendance record? So I think yeah, just before this match, have a pat on the back, shall we? Yeah, let's give ourselves a round of applause. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I guess yeah. Then we're at the the main event, so yeah, yeah. They're starting to show. They show the whole story and they I love the um I don't know if it's on the network, I doubt it is. Um <laughs> but it used to be uh, they, they showed the pre WrestleMania uh, media press conference press conference, yeah. You've got um Hogan and Andre and Bobby Heenan uh, starts out with G- Gene Oakland trying to interview Heenan, he's just constantly interrupted and he's yes. like, Well, I'll ask the questions, Bobby. And it's like oh okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. What would you like to ask me next, Mr. Oakland? He's like, I give up, Bobby Heenan. I give up. <laughs> and he, he starts carrying on and and um he's he's ripping he's ripping Hogan and he's saying, like, oh he and Piper can go to Hollywood together. They can they can um they can work on the on the back lot or yeah. <laughs> yeah. and everyone's laughing and you know, he's mocking and um and at a certain point it, yeah, he's he's just behaving badly and um, he's like a little decorum. Yeah. Or Bobby Heenan. Is that the same press conference where Hogan's like hitting hitting yeah. the table with a, a running yeah. cabin or something? Or you're human and you're going down. Yeah. We're about to find out. It's like, whoa, okay. Sorry. He's hitting yeah. the table. Like, yeah, okay. they show the build up um and yeah, they just slowly show the, the sour grapes turn of Andre getting jealous, wanting the title shot and all the rest of it. And yeah. Uh, he's like Look at me when I'm talking to you. Yeah. Are I'm, you or are you not going to give him a title shot? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> that, was just, that was just crazy, that was. Right. <laughs> Vince McMahon trying to interview Hogan in the locker room right before the match. And yeah. Vince McMahon looks like he's looking at a man that's completely insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. Watch Vince's face and not... Yeah. About focus on what Hogan's saying, but um, <laughs> yeah, you, you got and then obviously, uh, yeah, said said all the previous comments about Bobby Heenan, and uh, yeah. and you got Andre's right back there. He, he's he, um, I think it's this one, he, he rings Bob Uecker's neck. I think that's the rest of when you're four, is it four? Oh, yeah. Five. Yeah, okay. I was trying to remember. I couldn't actually remember seeing it a couple of days ago, but I remember Sorry. that. Happening. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But um, you see um, Andre's interviewed by Gene right before the match, and he's like, you? You see me now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a world championship around my around my waist. And he loves it. He just loves it. Loves yeah. It. <laughs> um, Jesus, yeah, he comes, he comes out this main event and Jesus. A load of crap thrown at him by the crowd. Oh, yeah. 
It's just getting it. pouted. <laughs> just getting pouted. And he's trying to just like brush it off. He's talking That's to Bobby. Bobby's obviously saying, just let it go, man. That's right. just like, I'm going to kill all these peasants. This is throwing shit there's, at me. There's things to unpack actually in, in the actual match, which, uh, which I do. I took interest in at the time, but there's a few things that I, we've all sort of, le- or many of us have learned since. Yeah. Um, from hearing other accounts of it, of um, to Andre's general state of health and yeah. certain things that he was doing in the match, but you, you wouldn't, unless you understood what his, some of his issues were, you wouldn't necessarily pick up on some of the management of, of the match. Actually, um, we'll, we'll get it's not too much to add here, really, but we'll, we'll no. get into it. But, um, I mean, the, geez, the stare down, yeah, the, start of the match, and just the, the the camera work and the drama and the stage, you know, there's some cameras people, going off. The people interviewed, um, like earlier in the day, there's people like asked who's going to win, Hogan, Andre, and there's, I mean, there's some kid who's like. Andre's just going to kick him around the ring and then pin him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a few people that withhold, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, most people clearly thought that actually it was Andre's time. Yeah. And that Hogan was going to lose it because there was just no physical way it would be possible for him to win. Yeah. And they tell the story brilliantly yeah. in the ring. And leading up to the match they tell that story brilliantly it's, it's epic um i mean i suppose you know you get over this the stare down you know andre in the, in the early exchanges he just overpowers hogan very easily um yeah. and you can just see this isn't going well and it, yeah <laughs> i can't remember which bump came first but quite early in the match hogan um whether it was desperation or what he decides to go for it all and he tries to slam andre yeah and he can't do it and andre sort of falls over him and just squashes him and almost pins him within a whisker of losing it i think i was gonna i was gonna sorry i just wanted to cut you off there just like this is the point where they fixate on the fact that they thought they thought that andre had won the title they thought that was like a a slow two count Uh, jesse i know jesse does Ooh, that was close, Gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> was that free? And man, he didn't there. You can hear him in the background shouting, that was free. That yeah, was free. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's not. It's not free. It was two. But um, I, I know for most of the match, they just pinpoint on that one, like, almost beat him sort of moment. So. Yeah, it was a it was a great start to the match, and and he also he takes a big tumble outside the ring as well, Hogan. Yeah, quite early. Um, there's it's not a perfect match. No, 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 it's not. Um, it's not. It's not Savage Steamboat, but no, but it's it, it's a it's a fucking good match still. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. Actually, for the size of the both of them, really. I mean, what they pull off is brilliant. Actually, for Andre's limitations. Yeah. Yeah, so he's he's got the giant's disease and he's got he's got a lot of back problems. Yeah, um, he's very unhealthy. I, I mean, I must admit, I, I actually I was slightly tinged with sadness just watching certain things, probably because I'm looking for it more. Yeah, um, there were a number of points in the match um, when you just look at you look at Andre's face and he just looks. I, I'll say that he looks somewhere. He actually looks sick. Yeah. Um, he, he he's clearly in distress. Actually, he's he's having a really hard time yeah. physically. A couple of times where he looks, he just looks very very unwell, irrespective of he's taking bumps and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, a couple of times when he's on the canvas, even when he takes the big slam, actually, he's sort of almost gagging for air. He, he doesn't look healthy at all. It's, it's a bit of a worry. Yeah. Um, and he's he takes some shots from Hogan in the corner. And he, he's just looking sort of dazed and he genuinely looks very unhealthy. So um, I wouldn't have necessarily picked up on it in the same way years ago. But knowing what I do now, I must admit, it was um, it was a little bit difficult to, to see that. Yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, all, all the more respect. I mean, before the match, he's, um, you know, how, how these things get booked and agreed and the timing of it. Um, 
you'll hear accounts we've all had accounts probably of this over the years but um once the decision was made it was made and you know that's what vince wanted to to run with and um (laughs) it's it's a great story i think that um, andre was pretty much in cahoots with vince mcmahon and yeah you know and he did speak about it in that HBO um, film about Andre that was made a few years back. It, and he, out of respect for Andre, kept quiet and he, he allowed Andre to make Hogan believe that he may or may not feel like dropping. <laughs> yeah. <him>. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, like, if he does, it'll be up to him. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he feels like it. And, he, and I think uh, Hogan, from what I have heard you know it sounds like he was uh, not quite sure if it would actually happen um and he was just kind of waiting for andre's cues in the ring but um yeah i think, I think hogan did. actually asked him i think and he said in the ring and he was like okay <laughs> shit yeah that's right now he left that very open very awkward yeah. as hell um yeah. so, i mean i i, I mean i enjoy that story because it's just a lot of fun i mean you know yeah. um <laughs> He was professional though. He was he was absolutely he was. professional about it. And yeah, thanks to him. Um yeah, it was, it, it's the biggest moment in wrestling for me, yeah. this man. Um and a lot of people would just find that very hard to understand. Um everyone that was there sells it just by the reactions of everybody there, the commentary, um, Heenan who I'll come on to him a little bit more, but there's a couple of times when Andre's laying in some cheap shots on Hogan. There's a bit, he calls to, um, I can't remember what he says. He's in the corner and he's, he's saying like, smash his neck or, or he says something like that. Right. You can hear it slightly. Um, the camera picks up on some of the sound and yeah, he's, he's just constantly like saying, you know, like, like kill him go for him you know yeah (laughs) he's just constantly constantly doing that he's just being a brilliant heel manager and um you know so andre puts hogan in a bear hug for a little while and didn't really pick up on it that much before but i do now but because obviously they're, they're both just stood in the ring he's not got hogan lifted up so he doesn't basically put any put any load on onto andre's back so he's looking after Andre. Yeah. And we don't know these things years ago. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's another, it's a small detail, but it's just important that um, to pull the match off, they, they had to figure out how they were going to do it in a way that didn't, um, you know, injure Andre or compromise him any more than he already was, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a great match. There's there's also a, there's a weird spot when Hogan starts to build a bit of momentum and come back into the match a bit more. Um, they're outside the ring and he, he 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 tries to go for a pile driver of Andre on the mat and he's lifted up the <laughs> yeah mat. yeah and um, you just thought don't even try like that's bullshit. Uh, it, even slamming him would be a miracle, but you're not going to fucking pile drive. Don't even bother. Oh, I know. <laughs> it, was actually, it was quite a dumb spot to even try in a lot of ways because it just obviously was incredible. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they, they quickly move on from that and they get straight back into the ring and just sort of forget that ever happened. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. The end actually comes fairly swiftly, I suppose. Um, got him off his feet a couple of times, and Andre's really struggling at this point because the time's starting to work against him. And, um, yeah, he, he he does the big epic body slam on Andre, he picks him up, and it is it is impressive to watch it yeah. back. It really is. It's, it, it's it's been talked about over the years, but it is fucking unbelievable to see him pick up Andre the Giant and slam him. It really was. Yeah, because this is the other thing. What they did such a great job of was like he was Hulk Hogan, he was Hulkamania, he was everything that America stands for. But having done that, that catapulted Hulk Hogan to well, now he's literally Superman. Now he's God. 
look what he's just yeah. fucking done. <laughs> and, he, and he gets he gets the pin. Um, he drops the leg after that and gets the pin. And, and as I say, as Hogue is pinning him, I have to say Andre looks quite unwell. Um, so that that was a bit of a worry. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you've even got Jesse saying like, even I didn't think he could bring on Gorilla. <laughs> and uh, what, a, what, a finish, what a finish it was. Oh, definitely. 100%. It was a hell of a hell of a main event. God, and I, one of my favourite little spots is a um, couple of minutes later when Andre's loaded up onto the on the ring, the ring with wheels. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and um, Heenan's on there. Heenan's got his back to Andre, and he's got his head in his hands, and he's just kind of leaning over the the ropes on the other side of this cart. <laughs> Yeah, and the whole time he's got, he's literally they're throwing stuff at him, as you pointed out before. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. whole time, I'm just watching he now. I'm not even watching Andre sort of looking back and pointing at the ring. Yeah, it's like cussing Hogan. I'm not even really watching that. I'm, I'm just, it's for me, it's Heenan that's selling it because he's yes. got his head this whole time, all the way back down that long aisle. Yeah, and what what he's actually selling is. I've just lost the biggest match of my whole life. I might yeah. never ever recover from this. It's like I'm on the biggest stage. I can't even look at anyone. Yeah, <laughs> I've got my yeah. head in my hand, and yeah. it, it's just selling it. It's just peddling that, and it, it is making Hogan all the big for it. And yeah. um, that's what I mean. It's just about how to, how to tell an amazing story. Yes, which Definitely. they did. And that's that. That for me is just why it's the greatest WrestleMania ever for me. Um, uh, emotionally, uh, wrestling in your ten. Um, in some ways, that's probably it had a lot of meaning for me because it actually got me into wrestling. Yeah. Um, and I love the obviously the finish of WrestleMania ten. Um, but in terms of like being sort of unbiased and just trying to tell it straight, this is the one for me that is bigger than anything else in terms of spectacle and. Um, you know, accomplishment and just don't just don't think anything quite touched it for the for that sort of meaning and just how well the stories were all told. I mean, there were one or two there were one or two matches that were slightly forgettable, I suppose. But by and large, yeah, most as we've talked about, we've both pretty much enjoyed. A um, number of them were outstanding. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a hell of a WrestleMania. It's definitely 1987. I mean, yeah, it's so top it. I mean, it really is. We we did talk about Starcade '87. Yeah. Yeah, NWA. Yeah. At the time, and it's funny now we've recently watched both of them. Yeah. As much fun as certainly we had watching the nwa starcade when you put them side by side like this you really can't compare oh no you wwf compare. wf was miles ahead of the nwa you know in the 80s absolutely 80s. i mean that's not knocking anything no 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 yeah both said nice things and you know good things about the nwa starcade that year and um, yeah. a lot of the guys on that card um but this is the place to be in 1987. I mean, I talked about pop culture. Yeah. Beverly Hills Cop 2 came out that year. <laughs> yeah. And there's a little cameo in it <laughs> of the man in Beverly Hills Cop 2. You can hear him. You can't right. see him, but you can. Because um, Foley calls um, Jeff back in Detroit. He's supposed to be looking after the Ferrari. Yeah. And uh, he calls him and he's at his apartment and he's and it's really late in Detroit. Yeah, and uh, he he's listening to and watching WWF wrestling, and you can hear it. You can hear yes. Vince commentating, on the match. <laughs> yes. and he's got popcorn. And I just thought, well, you know, Beverly Hills Pop Two. That was that's that's pretty fashionable. That's pretty cool in 1987. And they've got <laughs> and and you know they think it's cool to be watching WWF wrestling in 1987. And maybe yeah. there was some vague relationship because obviously uh, Axel Foley was from Detroit, Michigan. You know, WrestleMania was that year. 
not in Detroit, but um, you know Pontiac and fair play. It, uh, maybe there's a maybe there's just like a really minor link linkage there. I don't know, yeah. Why not? It's it's just nice to it's nice to think about that at the time. Yeah. You know, it was something presentable to mainstream movies and yeah. pop culture in general. You know, it was, and that's where it was because Hulk Hogan was Mister America, wasn't he? It was, yeah. It, the Hulkamania was in its prime back oh, then. Yeah. It's hilarious as well. Just um, going back, uh, almost full circle here, but to, in the opening when Aretha Franklin's doing singing "America the Beautiful," they've yeah. got like a um, a montage of Americana that they're yeah. showing you. So you've got people working in factories and offices, and like kids playing, and people just doing cool things, and uh, yeah. it's almost like a it's like a Ronald Reagan presidential election um, <laughs> piece almost. They're just, I mean, it's all about America, but yeah, um, it's it's a, it's very much like a cultural thing. You can see that just by watching the event, how much it goes to tap into it. Definitely, yeah. No, I get that. Yeah, that was that was. I mean, yeah, we're talking about this differently to probably how a lot of other people would on their remember um, it, yeah. on their and yeah i'm talking about the yeah it's, it's not just the matches that made it great it's the it's the people and the yeah and the time and um how things were yeah and what it meant definitely you know, that's, it's a that's good way to sum it up on it and, it's a good way to sum it up uh, well yeah where do you, think... how, how do we follow that how do how do we follow that i mean well, show like this how it's tough now, isn't it? To um, be fair, yeah. I mean, show must go on. It must, yeah. I mean, on our next episode, we're going to cover WrestleMania Eight, which was the first WrestleMania I'd seen myself because you know ninety two is when I got fully into wrestling. Um, but yeah, WrestleMania Eight was a pretty decent, decent event. Um, so yeah, next that'll be the next episode. So. Anything else you want to say about WrestleMania three before we wrap the show up? No, I can't. I, I can't add anything more. You said it all. You said it all for us. So that's great. So yes, that's it for this episode of And Then the Bell Rang. We hope you enjoyed our deep dive into these classic moments and their legendary figures of the eighties. Um, if you love reminiscing with us, don't forget to subscribe, rate, leave a review. Follow us on social media to stay updated on future episodes and share your favourite wrestling memories with us. Until next time, keep your passion for wrestling alive. And remember, the bell may have rung, but the memories never fade. See you in the next bout.